How do most people follow up when they follow up? What do they say? Hey, I'm just doing what? Just following up. Do you have any questions? I had a person actually follow up with me once and said, hey, I woke up thinking about you this morning. Do you know how it's like, man, that is so creepy for you to say that. You don't want to say, man, I woke up thinking about you today. So, so when I'm noticing this follow-up concept, I'm like, number one, here's what you should never say. I'm just checking in. Here's an insurance example. I had a guy in insurance that believed I was underinsured. He believed I was underinsured. So he called me every Monday morning at 8 a.m. to try to sell me more life insurance with the same pitch. Never text, never, never send a video, same crappy pitch every Monday morning, 8 a.m. So one Monday, I decided that I was going to trick him. I called him at 758 and I'm like, I know you're about to call me with this real bad insurance pitch that you got. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pitch you on my coaching services because you need to learn how to follow up, right? Same follow up. So here's what people say. Just checking in. Here's the things I never want you to say again. If you want to write these down, write them down. Never say I'm just checking in. Never say I'm just doing my due diligence. Never say I woke up thinking about you. Never say, do you have any questions? Never say, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? These are all ways people follow up when they follow up. And if you're going to get, see, here's the, here's the concept. The purpose of the follow-up is what? When we're talking million-dollar follow-up, what's the purpose of the follow-up? To bring a person to a decision. But I would even go deeper. It's to rekindle the initial attraction that a person had to you or the product or service is to rekindle that initial attraction between you, the product, or the service. It is also to show how you can solve their problem better than anybody else because here's the concept. Money changes hands when problems are solved. The bigger the problem, the more money people pay to solve that problem. Everybody understand? So part of the follow-up is to come back at a person to articulate to them what their problem is and how you can solve it better than anybody else. Because when you're selling insurance, you're selling a commodity. What I'm really buying is you. What I'm really buying is your enthusiasm. What I'm really buying is your energy. What I'm really buying is your conviction. So think about it this way. For you to go the distance in this follow-up, there's got to be three things that's got to happen. Number one, you have had to have a major revelation that your product and service can help a person get to a better place in their life. Now, how many of you have had that revelation? It's important because if you ever ever get a phone call that says, I couldn't have done this without you. If you ever get a phone call from a person that says, if you wouldn't have been for you, I don't know what kind of place I would have been in. See, what, what I'm saying is if you've not had a big revelation, which I had at 15, 16 years old, that a good coach can change a person's life. If you hadn't had that revelation, you don't have the conviction And the conviction is a deep-seated belief and confidence that you and your product and service can get another person to a much better place in their life. Without the revelation, I don't have the conviction. And without the conviction, guess what I don't have? I don't take enough action. I don't take enough action. Because if you've had conviction and you believe your product and service can get to a better place, why would you go two touches? Why would you give up when a person tells you no one time? Why would you quit going the distance when a person's, right? So so when you're thinking about this concept, revelation, conviction, action.